Mind of the Meanie is now an exclusive brand partner with WWEShop.com. Pick up all your favorite new merchandise from Roman Reigns. Acknowledge me. Cody Rhodes. I have to finish the story. LA Knight. Let me talk to you. And more using our exclusive link in the show notes. Click below and show your support today for your favorite WWE superstar at WWEShop.com. Yeah! This is the Mind of the Meanie. Here are your hosts, the Blue Meanie and Adam Barnard. Peace world and welcome to the Mind of the Meanie, your weekly peek into the world according to former WWE superstar and ECW original, the Blue Meanie. We'll cover wrestling, music, movies, sports, and lots and lots of useless knowledge all contained in the Mind of the Meanie. I'm your tour guide, a perpetually sick Adam Barnard, and he is the groggy voice Blue Meanie, Meanie. How you feeling, brother? What's on your mind? Uh, to continue with our pre-show joke, uh, no, this is not Kathleen Turner. <laughs> uh, yeah, man. Uh, my my throat has been like on fire for the last couple of days. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I feel like I've been sick since mania, but it was just congestion and coughing. And but like I say, like mania week talking a lot and just, yeah you know not getting any rest yeah, I, I, I kind of lost my voice mania night uh, well mania night two <clears throat> and uh just been perpetually uh coughing yeah Aller- it went to allergy season two so i'm used to that but like the last three days it's like uh mm-hmm. it's to the point where I, I finally admit that i'm not well and mrs meanie breaks my balls for Finally putting it over that I'm not well because like yeah. I perpetually say, oh, no, I'm good. I'm good. I'm mm-hmm. good. But uh, I'm at the point where I'm saying, yeah, my throat is on fire. Uh-huh. Um, but, you know, last night uh, we went and bought the old school Listerine, the ugly ass yellow. Oh, the good stuff. The Listerine that looks like alcoholic piss. Uh. Uh, <laughs> Shit, will kill New York rats, man. Oh, Jesus Christ. Um, that's funny. Why I go to take a piss at my Cusker, so I said, I got to go recycle. Because <laughs> I, I joked that the uh, urinals go right back to the beer taps. But, uh, um, oh, my God. Yeah, I'm arguing with old school Listerine that, like, nobody likes. No. It's like, it's military fucking grade fucking Listerine. God. And, um. Uh, They've been doing the, uh, we got that sea salt, like, uh, stuff. Yeah. Put that in a cup of warm water and just gargle that. Mm. And today's like a little bit of relief. Like, I got, yesterday I couldn't, like, I I could, like, talk, but, like, it felt like I was gargling razor blades, like, oh. or, like hot, hot fucking razor blades. Oh. Today's, I woke up this morning, like, oh, okay. But still, you know, I'm still fucking uh, raspy. Yeah. Yeah, uh, dude. Smoky Kathleen Turner. Um, <laughs> from Antima Stone era. Uh, you know, I'm, I'm trying to think of some funny lines from the movie. I can't remember. Romance of Stone is one of my favorite movies from, from like, being a kid. But, um, yeah. You sound like Sam. Hey, you sound like Sam, Sam Kreps after I uh, used to make him smoke cigarettes at the bar with me in college. <laughs> I'm right definitely going to McCuskers later, so maybe yeah. I'll do. A, I'll gargle some uh, Crown Royal later. Or something. <laughs> Take a couple of shots of whiskey before bed, man. Hopefully that'll that'll clear that shit right out, dude. But went to McCuskers and I was like, yeah, give me a shot of that because they have a couple bottles. You know, Crown's got different flavors. Yeah, I was like, Doug, that uh, bottle of Crown Vanillas keeps showing me its tits. How about uh, a <laughs> <laughs> let, me I love it. let me get a shot of that crown vanilla. Keep showing me his titty. <laughs> that is fucking great. <laughs> oh my god, that is hilarious. I've never heard that before, but I'm gonna use that from now on. Oh man, that's so good. Fucking the- show me them titties. Give me some yeah. of that booze. <laughs> 
Oh, oh crap. <laughs> but uh, yeah. Oof. Yeah. Hey, this is where I'm at. I, uh, I don't know if you can see, you can see it on the patreon.com slash mind of the meanie, but I'm giving you the big eyes right now. Cause if I look to the, to the left here, you can see it's coming back here, pal, whatever this fucking infection is. Um, I can start it. I can feel it in my throat. And like, I know, I, so like I said, when we last talked, I had strep B and they gave me like this super strong amoxicillin. It's one of the reasons I ended up in the hospital too. And, uh, between the exhaustion and the fucking sickness, and, yeah. um, I feel like too, I feel like I've been sick since WrestleMania and I just like, it just won't fucking go away. So now I got to schedule an appointment with a fucking ear nose and throat specialist because yesterday I was in the car and it felt like somebody stabbed me inside of my ear canal. Like it was like, and, and it was inside too, but it was enough where it like, it threw me off for a second where I was like, I might have to pull over. This is fucking painful. And yeah. dude, this shit is not pleasant. I don't know what it is, but like. I, and I know we've talked about this before, but I feel like, especially this year, this winter, I have been sicker than I think I ever have been before in my life. And not just like the, like how sick I get, but the volume of sickness that I have, like just, it's just so much all the time. And yeah. I just like, it's, it just doesn't stop. And I'm hoping it doesn't get worse than this. I got to call an ENT after the show today, or at least try to schedule an appointment for sometime this week. But like, Fuck man. And, and of course, you know, like you, you go out, like I, I, I'm trying to keep up on my fitness routine and stuff. So I'm, I'm, I'm on the treadmill today because I'm trying not to push it too hard. And I got this yeah. fucking, what looks like pink guy, but I know isn't pink guy. It's just whatever this infection is. And, uh, yeah. God, dude, I fucking hate it, man. I hate this shit so much, but I appreciate the fact that we are pushing through here today with our truncated, uh, episode here. Um, we appreciate you and the pod squad. We appreciate you coming through as well. And, uh, I don't know, man. I don't know what we, we had the WWE draft last night, the beginning of it. Uh, I don't know if you had a yeah, chance to catch that out. Um, uh, the only thing I really wanted to talk about with that was, uh, was Baron Corbin being drafted to SmackDown. And, um, hmm. I, uh, I got to tell you, man, I hope that they fucking, I know Mrs. Goober loves this phrase when I say it, but I hope they strap a fucking rocket to Baron Corbin now and shoot him to the fucking moon and give him every title that they can possibly give him. Um, yeah. Corbin's the homie, as you guys know, listeners, longtime listeners of the show will know he and I uh, share a connective tissue here in Westchester, Pennsylvania. Uh, amazing dude, amazing fucking guy, and an even better wrestler too. Like, from what I understand, one of the safest people in the business right now and just just universally loved by by everybody. So uh, I'm hoping that they will take what they what he did in NXT with the Wolf Dogs uh, packaging with him and Braun Breaker. I hope that they uh, I hope that they establish that in uh, in SmackDown. What do you think there, uh, blue guy? Yeah, dude, he's 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 battle tested. He's been there a while. Uh, and sometimes you have to. Go, you know, to it like an NXT to, you know, put on a fresh coat of paint. Yeah. So to speak. Uh, I know people try to keep calling NXT the the uh, developmental brand, which in a way it is, in a way, in a way it is, in a way it is not. Uh, if you're on NXT and you're on the USA Network, it's really not developmental. Developmental is for you to go away and not be seen for a while. But there's levels to NXT. You know, there's the uh, A squad, which is on TV. There's B, you know, the uh, the people who do the, uh, there's like a, uh, they do a, like a, uh, a set of like house shows. I mm -hmm. forget what it's called. But they, you know, they're doing house shows around. Yeah. Florida area, non televised, so you can make all the feel free to make all the mistakes you can make just to learn. And then there's this, you know, C squad where you're strictly just practicing at the performance center. Yeah. You know, it, so it is developmental, but it's not. But the fact that he went, you know, he went away from SmackDown Raw, went over to NXT, put on a fresh coat of paint, try something new. So when they come bring him back over to SmackDown and Raw, you know, um, it'll be uh, he'll have a, like a you know a fresh look. 
Yeah. And so that's sometimes, that's sometimes that's what you need. Yeah. You know, um, you get that, you know, uh, wrestlers get that uh, fatigue where, you know, fans are, I won't say they're tired of seeing them, but they've seen them so much they're desensitized to them. It's like, <clears throat> what's the biggest pop usually somebody gets was when they come back from injury, you know, because yeah. they haven't been on TV in ages, you know? Yeah. You know, Triple H came back, you know, with his, uh, what was that? The Beautiful Day music video montage. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He, he was out for a little bit. You know, Kurt Angle came back. John Cena came back at the Rumble. Edge came back. When guys come back from injury, their pops are always huge because they've been away and fans missed them. Yeah. You know, so Baron going over to NXT. You know, he's still on TV, still doing stuff. So he's not getting rusty. He's he's trying something new. Yeah. But now he's back, you know, coming over to SmackDown. And uh, the sky's the limit with that guy. He, he's great. He's, yep. Like I said, he's battle-tested, universally loved. Everybody yeah. loves working with him. And uh, I'm excited to see where it goes. Well, I hope that they, uh, I hope they know what they have with Baron Corbin and I hope they, they yeah. strap a fucking rocket to him. Like I said, I think he, uh, I think he's the guy, the other guy I liked a lot last night that I saw on, uh, SmackDown was Karrion Cross, friend of the show and the, the final Testament stuff. Give me that all fucking day. Like yeah. I fucking love that shit. Have you had a chance to watch what they've been doing with that or uh, I just, I think it's great. Bits and pieces, bits and pieces. Uh, my wrestling digest, uh, digestive uh, system uh, has been in uh, bits and pieces. Love carrying across. Great guy. Humble guy. God has the look. Yeah. You know, uh, and I love what, you know, I love that they have them there, you know, with that uh, faction, yeah, you know, uh, but uh, yeah, bring, bring the uh, listeners up to speed. Uh, what's going on with that? Oh well, they've just been having vignettes recently, and then last sure. night they had a segment where Cross was backstage, and they um, they were attacking uh, Pete Dunn, and uh, oh god, I can't think of his tag team partner's name from NXT. Excuse me, and they uh, they were beating the shit out of them backstage, and he just went crazy like random acts of violence. And he's like, it's going to continue until we get what I get, what we want. And, yeah. uh, man, and he's like, whether it's raw or SmackDown, we're going to keep doing this until we get what we want. I was like, fuck, this is such good shit. Like, it's like, it's like cut-ins that are like, like they kind of throw you off your axis a little bit and are like kind of disturbing in some ways, but it's perfect because it's like the breakup in the show, you know? Um, yeah. I really hope that they're able to build with that. And again, I think, I've been saying this too to some of the some of the people I speak to in the wrestling world. Like, I feel like this draft is really the time for Hunter to shake the board, right, and really reassess and realign everything. And I think, in a lot of ways, everybody's kind of been in limbo while they worked through the final stages of the Bloodline and Cody's story. And now, I think we're I'm hoping we're really going to get the opportunity to see a lot of these different storylines start to bloom and kind of pop up and become their own things. And I'm, I'm, I'm very excited about that. But one of them being the cross um, final Testament group. So I'm hoping if he stays on SmackDown, maybe he'll, you know, they'll build him up enough to get a, give him a run at Cody. I think that would be super dope. Um, and I hope if he goes to raw, I hope they give him the fucking big gold belt, man, like do something with this guy. I fucking, I don't know. I, I think he's great. I think the whole presentation's great. I think the whole product that they're doing with him is fantastic. And I hope they keep it up. I like the draft, but the thing that drives me nuts about the draft is when they say SmackDown has drafted so so has been snap so and so has been drafted to SmackDown when they're already on SmackDown. Right, right. So, why can't they just say SmackDown is retaining so and so or you know you know yeah, he, He's drafted to the place he's he's been for the last two fucking years. So yeah. how, how's he drafted to? He hasn't left. <laughs> it's a I'm not say, SmackDown is retaining. Yeah, whoever or or same with Raw. <laughs> oh, so he's being drafted to Raw. How's he be drafted to fucking Raw? He's been on fucking Raw. Yeah, 
No, Raw is retaining so and so. Yeah, they're staying here. Yeah. Now I, yeah, I, he didn't, have, he didn't have to fuck a pack a bag. He's <laughs> so on like a Joe. So how is he drafted to some place he's already he, been? How did he? He never left. He never went anywhere. Yeah, no. please just. That's my only little pet peeve with the the whole draft idea. Just yeah, you know, just uh, fix the phraseology, please. <laughs> Ah, I'm an expert in phraseology. I appreciate that I reference. Was the NFL draft last night. The Eagles did pretty good. I so. saw they were talking. I, and, and you have to catch me up to speed on this because Matt from Dover was telling me that like their number one pick, the was it the cornerback that that the Eagles got? Kenyon uh, Kenyon Mitchell. He's like the best in like the best prospect it, that's supposed to be coming up, right? And the Eagles got him like out of nowhere. The Eagles. Well, he was, a lot of people were saying he was a top 12 pick and the Eagles got him at 22. Wow. But uh, thankfully there was like a, a streak of like the first maybe 17, 16, 17 players were all on offense and he kind of just fell down the, the draft, not to any detriment of his own. Right. You know, some guys will fall down the, the draft ladder because of some out, out like off the field issue right right it was just like all the teams in the f top of the draft needed offensive players like seven quarterbacks or something like that went in like early wow and he, he fell to the eagles at 22 where like howie roseman is notorious for moving up in the draft he didn't have to move up in the draft like he had two second round picks to play with to you know move up and use one of those picks. He didn't have to use one. And then um, uh, last night we got, well, back to Mitchell. Um, this is the first time the Eagles have taken a cornerback in the yeah. first round in 22 years since, you know, uh, Lito Shepard. Uh, and then the second round they take another, you know, cornerback or I'll, I'll say defensive back because I uh, – the player's name is Cooper DeJean. So uh, <laughs> we all know where that last name's yeah, going. Dude, they're, 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 yeah, good luck, man. <laughs> Cooper, Cooper DeJean. DeJean. But I prefer uh, DB Cooper. Yeah. Yeah. So that was really good. Um, and then the uh, third player they took, I'm blanking because he's like, it, He's from a school nobody really has really heard of, but uh, Vic Vangio's a huge mm. uh, fan of this kid and wanted him. So, uh, yeah, the, the Eagles moved back twice in the third round. And I'm just sitting there like they're up next and they're like, oh, they're trading back. I'm like, son of a bitch. <laughs> Come on, guys. I, I just picked your third rounder. I want to go watch the Phillies. Yeah, I want to get uh, this over with. Jesus. But the Eagles did pretty good. Uh, you know, they got three, I think they got three picks in the fourth round today. So oh, shit. Yeah. yeah, I hope it, uh, I hope it, it leads to a fun season. I'm excited. Um, we got to also, as we're talking about this, we got to plan out our, our Phillies game trip very yeah. soon. Uh, so we're going to actually, I think what I'm going to do is for that, I'm going to make a special vlog for that trip with Meanie and I at the Philly stadium. Uh, and we'll, uh, we'll have a good time. We're going to enjoy it. It'll be extra content for you guys on the Patreon feed. This is not going to be on the regular feed. No, no, no. No, sorry, Bob. That's going to be exclusive for all of you fans at the Patreon page, which you can sign up today at patreon.com slash bind of the meanie. Tears start meanie. I don't know if you know this, but they start at just $10 a month. So, uh, you know, you, be. you can't beat that. And what else you can't beat, my friend, is a question for you. Uh oh. Are you ready to well, ask meanie? Uh, it's kind of early, but I would love to. My, <laughs> throat, wanna... my, throat, my, my throat prefers you too. I was going to say, if you want, we can keep going. But if you don't, we can we can let it ride, brother. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, but it's the fucking question. <laughs> <laughs> Ask me something. I can't remember what regular air is like. Don't forget to tweet us your questions using the hashtag Ask Meanie, and you may hear them on the show. Like I said, we're doing a little bit of a truncated episode today. Uh, Meanie, we're trying to preserve Meanie's. We're trying to uh, preserve Meanie's uh, voice 
and uh, allow us both to get a little bit of rest here. And we will hopefully be back with a full episode next week for you. Uh, what do you shout got? out to our uh, pod, our, our uh, pod squads in the uh, chat today? Yeah, uh, lively room. We appreciate you all coming in, and don't forget to drop your questions using the hashtag Ask Me. I'm going to start with a question from the pod squad after we talk about our seltzers here, sir. I have a, oh, uh, a wait, fresh. I need some bottles. I was going to say I need something. I got a fresh. Uh, what do you got there? What you got today? Uh, no surprise here. I got the uh, pumpkin pie. <laughs> uh, Bell V that I got. I think I got one more case left. There you go. About- I got a uh, sparkling frost, a cheap shit from the Aldi. I got a cherry limeade today. Shout out to my daughter, Sophie, who brought this up in the run in because uh, I didn't oh, have it here. So uh, we're going to crack these ready in three, two, one. Oh, yeah. Mm, that's some good shit, man. It smells like a melted like a, whatever it's called. Oh, man. Like a uh, popsicle. That's the word I was looking for. It's like a fucking cherry popsicle. It's a good chip. Yeah, that felt good on the throat. Yeah, I was going to say. That cold. Oh, man. <laughs> <laughs> you guys got to do this every week with the spritz in the, in the microphones. Uh, what's up, Carl? You know, Meanie? What's that, Adam? We hear this a lot. Every CBD company tells you that their product is the best. With quality control measures like lab testing and QR codes now becoming the standard, it can start to seem like all CBD brands are the same, but I'm here to tell you something, Meanie. They are not. Knowing what makes certain brands better will help you spend your money more wisely and have more confidence as you incorporate CBD oils, topicals, capsules, or gummies into your own wellness routine. And that's why we're proud to partner with Green Road CBD as an official sponsor of Mind of the Meanie. And Meanie, I know you're a longtime user of Green Road CBD. How has Green Road CBD helped you in your life? Let me tell you, Green Road CBD is, is a product I've been using for years. And uh, when we started Mind of the Meanie, I always was, was like, let's get Green Roads as a, as a sponsor because I use them almost daily, uh, whether it's the gummies you know, to take care of the aches and pains of 30 years of, of wrestling, the topical solutions uh, to help my knees, help my back, help my elbows, help my shoulders. Green Road CBD has done everything to help me maintain uh, a pain-free existence from all the years of wear and tear as a professional wrestler. And to me, Meanie, that sounds like the Green Road's difference. And it comes down to a really few important points. They're just part of the reason that they've won industry awards year after year earned thousands of five-star reviews and have heard countless stories from customers just like you about the impact that those products have had on your life. So Green Roads is led by a a compounding pharmacist with 25 years of experience helping her community getting healthy. For her and the entire company, it's more than just a job. It's a mission. And not all hemp sourcing is equal, meaning I'm not sure if you're aware of that. But they select our they select their hemp from high quality American farms, and also not all lab testing is equal, which is why they use an accredited independent lab to conduct full panel tests on every single batch. And that's why Green Roads is an original manufacturer, not just a quote unquote white label brand. So right now you can go to GreenRoads.com, Meanie, and save twenty five percent off of your entire purchase. Wow, twenty five percent off of everything, Meanie. That's huge. And all you have to do is go to their website right now, greenroads.com, and use promo code MEANI at checkout. That's 25% off your entire purchase by using promo code MEANI at greenroads.com. Own the day with Green Road CBD, and we thank them for sponsoring the program. Uh, we're going to start with uh, Travis Bohab. Hey, now. Uh, one of hey, our... Now. A longtime Pod yeah. Squad members here. Meanie, have you heard the new Pearl Jam album yet? Yeah. Uh, per, new Pearl Jam album is very good. Um, yeah, I've, I've listened to it a few times. Uh, ironically, my favorite, well, my, my favorite track is a track called Waiting for Stevie. <laughs> uh, you know, no, no relation to Stevie Richards, but there's the, the track "Waiting for Stevie's really good. Yeah, uh, I'm bad with. Uh, back in the day, when I, I would get a new album, I'd sit there and listen to it front and back, back to front. 
start read the uh, liner notes, read the track listing, and have every song memorized. Uh, I'm not that way. I wish I was still that dedicated now, you know. But uh, you know, not being a teenage kid who has a lot of free time, yeah. um, I don't get to study the albums like I used to. But uh, new Pearl Jam's really good. Also, um, I've been meaning to say this for. I don't know. I got a little seltzer kiss. You got it. it. Oh, uh, uh, no. Nope. Nope. <laughs> nope that, was that, that was puke. That was puke. Oh, there. Go. I, there could, go. I could see the fear there for a second. You were like, oh, no. Oh, God, no. Oh, Not going to oh, puke. No. Not going to puke. Back off, Vince. <laughs> He's going to puke. He's got to puke. Ah. But, um, I've been meaning to say this for a couple of weeks. The fucking new Black Crows is fucking amazing, too. Mm. Uh, their first single, Wanting and Waiting, is fucking amazing. Like, I love the Black Crows. They've been my, I've been like day one with Black Crows. Uh, so it's, you know, I saw, I saw them do a beach. Shit. Okay, start that over. <laughs> I've been watching them do a, uh, I, I Watched him do a beach beach concert in Atlantic City, mm. August nineteen ninety, and uh, it's like that's that's my band. Yeah, because you know, I always heard growing up, you know, I had for, you know older friends. I saw the Rolling Stones in nineteen sixty six on the Boardwalk in Atlantic City at Steel Pier, and I'm like, fuck you. <laughs> uh, <laughs> so like, Black Crows come along. I was like, this is going to be my Rolling Stones, you know, and. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, you know, there, there's been uh, ups and downs with the the band, like any band, and uh, I think I'm a big fan of their drummer Steve Gorman, and uh, I haven't listened to his audiobook a couple times. I was kind of like hesitant to like anything that did, didn't have Steve Gorman in the band, but uh, this new uh, the new Black Crows is undeniably good. Yeah. It's so good, and the new Pearl Jam is really good. Uh, I, I'm Still in a couple rotations, you know, still getting uh, familiarized with it. So, um, but yeah, New Pearl Jam is amazing. It, highly recommend New Pearl Jam and highly recommend New Black Crows. I'll have to check it out. I haven't heard, I haven't heard uh, Black Crows, but I'm interested to check it out. So I'll be looking. What's the name of that record? Is it Happiness? Am I thinking of the right one? Happiness Bastards. That's the one. Yep. I have it on my queue. I do, like I said, I know we've, it, it, I miss the physical media aspect of Same. albums and CDs and shit. It seems to be making like a reappearance, which is really cool. Like I love that it's kind of coming back again, but I, uh, cool. good. I don't know what were you saying. I was just gonna say, I just, I, no, 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 it's fine. I just, I was thinking, what I was gonna say was, um, I, the liner notes, like it was like a, it was like a process, right? When we were kids, yeah. like I remember being a teenager and like, you get the, your favorite new records at like, Oh, finally I fucking got my hands on it because you go to FYE, where it was what was it called before then? The Wall. You go to the Wall yeah. or Tower Records or one of those places, and you're like, "Oh fuck, this." I have a roll of stickers from the Wall, yeah. where I <laughs> dude. Do you really? Oh my god, I would love to put them shits on my fucking CDs, man. Oh my I god, might. I might. I had a fucking. I had a copy of Significant Other by Limp Biscuit that still played up until very recently, and on the CD cover on the back still had my original Wall sticker, which that's a. For the uninitiated, the wall was a CD and a record store. Uh, I don't know if it was just in here in the Philadelphia region or if it was national, but uh, it was at the Oxford Valley Mall was the one that was closest to us when I was growing up. And on all of your CDs, you got a black sticker on the back of it that said the wall, life, lifetime, I think it's something like lifetime replacement guarantee, which yeah. basically means if the CD was scratched, if it was fucked up, if it got cracked, you could go back to the wall and replace the CD, no questions asked, with a brand new copy of the record. And let me tell you something, man. That was the fucking coolest shit in the world because it closed. Like, I, or I think the wall transitioned into FYE, which was like kind of the, you know, the corporate like, hey, how do you do fellow kids kind of store? Um, and they, <laughs> they would not, after a while, they stopped honoring the uh, wall guarantee. So it sucked, but it was, it was a cool – it was like a fucking – I wish I had photos of the place because it was just like, it was an experience going to it, you know? Yeah. Um, yeah. So, but I, I feel like now is like, I'm, I'm, you know, did you go there, you picked up the record and you'd fucking flip through the liner notes and lyrics and thank yous and production shit. Like, oh man. Yeah, shit, I, I, the engineer. Yeah. Uh, 
Yeah, dude. Yeah. Like everybody who's worked on the record was fucking was there. And it was just like, man, I missed that whole, I missed that entire process of things. But, um, yeah. Uh, shout out to Carl Pinnell too, who, uh, has some of his own credits as well, uh, with CKY and the Moxie, uh, which you should check them out. He's also got another, a bunch of fun stuff out now, uh, with Greta Hotmer, who is the singer of the Moxie, uh, that she's doing a new project and, uh, that's all on Spotify. So you can find it. We'll drop some links for, uh, for Carl, uh, RJ Krasinski. What's up, RJ? What's going on, dude? Thank you as always for your questions. We appreciate you. Uh, Meanie, what do you prefer? The NFL draft or the WWE draft? NFL draft. Because uh, I was just talking about like my little pet peeve with the the Raw, well, the WWE draft. So and so has been drafted SmackDown. Yeah, he's still on SmackDown. He, he's. <laughs> I mean, it's it's a reshuffling. I, don't, I, I like the reshuffling of Raw and SmackDown. Uh, even though sometimes you still see people on both brands, you know, mm-hmm. but, um, yeah, there's something about the NFL draft that I prefer, even though I don't watch college sports, it's just nice to see people get called up and, you know, realize their dreams for the first time. And, yeah. um, it's, it's, it's pretty cool. So yeah, I prefer the NFL draft you know, because, the familiarity that the whole WWE drafts is still fairly new, you know, and people are still trying to make it like, Oh, let's have WWE draft party. Yeah. No, <laughs> we're not going to have WWE draft parties. We're just going to watch them, uh, reshuffle. Yeah. So yeah. NFL draft for me, I was watching last night, uh, even though the Eagles kept fucking trading back in the third fucking round, I was like, God <laughs> damn it. I got to take a piss. <laughs> you know. Got to give and go. Um, yeah. Our last question here is from Carlo Carlson, our friend, uh, who does all of our incredible edits and all the fun uh, stuff you see on our Twitter page. Uh, Carlo is responsible for those recently. Hey, hey, Blue and Goob, I was wondering, have you two fellers ever visited any wacky tourist traps like an upside-down house or a giant fork in your travels on the highways and byways? Across the U.S. of A. Uh, not really. I don't think so. Uh, you know, I, I was living in Ohio, traveling around Michigan with Al. I forgot what highway it was, but there's this giant tire with a nail in it. I mean, like a tire <laughs> the size of a, like a tent. How many story? It's like this huge fucking tire that had a nail on the side of the it was for some tire company, mm-hmm. you know, Detroit, Motor City, cars, all this stuff. And you drive by and, you know, you're like, oh, there's the tire with the nail on it. You know, it's like if you go down to Margate, New Jersey, there's Lucy the Elephant, you yep. know. Yeah. Those kind of things, you know, those local whatevers. Yeah. Uh, not really. I, I, I mean... As you can nah, Niagara Falls ain't like a tourist trap thing, but uh, yeah. no, nah, this I, I wish you know I, I I would really have to think about that, but I don't not, nothing too crazy. I bet I went to a uh, Zach Baggins haunted mansion or whatever in Vegas. That was pretty cool. Oh, that's cool. You got to see uh, Kevorkian's death van and stuff like that, but uh, you know. <laughs> I don't know if that qualifies. I don't know if that qualifies. But. <laughs> I don't know. I'm not sure if I've ever been to like, cause I wouldn't count something like the love statue or the Rocky statue as like a wacky tourist trap, you know, like maybe, well, maybe the Rocky statue, but like that's a hometown thing. I don't know if that counts. <laughs> there was a place. So when I was growing up, there was a spot, there was a restaurant I think it was Langhorn in Bucks County. Um, it used to be called the Airplane Diner. And on the okay. top of the diner, there was a gigantic fucking airplane that had been decommissioned that they put on top of the restaurant. And they closed it down and the airplane was still there. And of course, all the residents were fucking pissed because they're like, how can anybody get around without knowing where the airplane is? You know, it's like, well, you can use a map. Uh, but they... They, the airplane restaurant closed, but I was like, it was bizarre because I think at some point you could actually like walk up into this airplane and like eat in there and stuff. And like, I don't know, 
that was, I think, maybe the wackiest thing I ever saw. But um, no, I can't think of anything else like off the top of my head. There wasn't really anything in Pittsburgh or Ohio that we saw that was like weird or out in Detroit. Um, so yeah, maybe the airplane's probably the best one I can answer right now. I think that's probably. I'll see if I can find pictures of it. I'm sure I there's somewhere, but this was a this was a unique fucking thing. Um, I'm not really sure how the restaurant was able to fucking hold the weight of this thing, but, uh, it was fucking odd, but. And, uh, Niagara Falls, like if you're over to the Canada side, there's a, a diner that's built like a UFO. Really? A UFO diner. And we went there. That was, that was pretty cool. That is but, cool. That's cool, man. Yeah. And what else is cool is when we get a chance to answer these questions for all of you that send them in to us each and every week. We appreciate it. That was a good transition this week. Uh, we appreciate you doing that. Don't forget to tweet us using your hashtag, Ask Meanie, and you may hear them on the show. Uh, and we appreciate you for listening. We appreciate you sticking through with us here as we uh, we do a smaller, more brief show today just because, uh, well, we're fucking sick. And we wanted to still give you something and be here for you each and every week. And we appreciate you. So, uh, Blue Guy, where can everyone keep up to date with all things blue when they're not listening to the program? If you would like to follow the Blue Meanie on all forms of social media, uh, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, uh, at Blue Meanie BWO on all forms of social media. If you would like to support the Blue Meanie, uh, go to ProWrestlingTees.com slash Blue Meanie. <clears throat> If you would like to uh, support the Mind of the Meanie, uh, go to ProWrestlingTees.com slash Mind of the Meanie. Con Elbow, the wrestling brand, go to ConElbowBrand.com and use coupon code Meanie or use coupon code Mind and support uh, Mind of the Meanie and Blue Meanie and uh, save 10% there over at ConElbowBrand.com. Uh, if you're in the Philadelphia area, go to JPT's for your t-shirt printing needs. Uh, JPT's is a family owned business that has been making quality printed shirts since 1986. That's where I go to for my, uh, my t-shirts. Uh, for more information, go to JPT's. That's the letter J, the letter P, T E E S dot com, JPT's dot com. Uh, madcatbeercare.com. Go to badcatbeercare.com and get the Blue Spruce Beard Oil and Balm. My boy Josh Thornton is doing an amazing job over there at madcatbeercare.com. He rounds up the kitties, uh, you know, the sick kitties, takes them to the vet, takes them to the clinic, and gets them, uh, releases them back better than he found them. So if you're a cat lover like myself, go to madcatbeercare.com. The Ultra Pro Wrestling video game coming to all major consoles in 2024. Ultra Pro Wrestling contains not only original characters created by the amazing Hal Haney, but many real world wrestlers, including myself and many others who I'm trying not to spoil. Go to ultraprowrestling.com or follow them on Twitter at UPW Video Game. That's ultraprowrestling.com or UPW Video Game. Uh, the video. <clears throat> Excuse me. The Figure Collections Bone Crushing Wrestlers a Series 1 variants of the Blue Mini are available right now. All Series 1s can be ordered uh, right now at shop.figurecollections.com. That's shop.figurecollections.com. Type Blue Mini in the search bar and either get normal blue meanie or BWO blue meanie. Either way, there's no wrong choice. Uh, to have the blue meanie on your podcast, go to podstars.net. That's P-O-D-S-T-R-Z dot net. Uh, register your podcast, book the blue guy, and uh, let's have a conversation over there at podstars.net. Cameo.com slash blue meanie BWO for birthdays, holidays, and well wishes. Please book through the site. Do not book through the app. The app takes too much of your hard-earned money. Uh, they, 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 the rate they take is outrageous. But uh, if you want to you know, make somebody say a little bit brighter, you know, holiday, well-wish, birthday, congratulations, go to cameo.com slash blue me Let's make somebody stay a little bit brighter. 
But uh, most importantly, Mr. Bernard, where can we find you, sir? Oh, well, thank you, sir. I appreciate you asking. You can find me at Instagram, Twitter, TikTok, and Threads. Uh, at this is Goober. Yes, it's my handle. No, I'm not changing it. It's a brand pal. So go and find me there. And this is Goober. And tweet me. Talk to me. Let me know what's going on. <clears throat> Excuse me. You can also find me on my other show, Foundation Radio, by going to foundationradio.net or going to youtube.com slash at Foundation Radio Pod. Uh, I have all my old interviews and all my content up there, including interviews with Bill Goldberg, Tommy Chung, some stuff from my radio days. And most recently, I have two recent uploads, uh, my interview and conversation with Ghostbusters Frozen Empire star Ernie Hudson, as well as both episodes where me and my friends play Dungeons and Dragons. So if you're into anything, we got it over there. So come and check us out uh, at youtube.com slash at Foundation Radio Pod. The Feinberg Method. Use promo code Goober and save up to 20% off of your entire purchase. My trainer, Brad Feinberg, is ready to help you with your physical and mental well-being. So go to thefeinbergmethod.com. Shout out to the homies at the 10th Ward Barbershop in downtown Lawrenceville on the outskirts of Pittsburgh. Uh, go and see uh, Kane and Jordan and the rest of the team at 10th Ward Barbershop com pro wrestling tees.com slash mind of the meaning pro wrestling tees.com slash foundation radio pick up a shirt and keep the lights on at casa de mini and the barnard home for wayward and troubled youth go to patreon.com slash mind of the meaning right now and sign up today and join us each and every week as we record our show and uh tears start at just ten dollars so you come and see us each and every week want to give a special shout out to uh, our ex engineer extraordinaire, Carl Pinnell, and the executive voice, Sam Krebs, for keeping us sounding great each and every week. And we appreciate you for listening. Leave us a five-star review and a great review wherever you listen to your show. Tell a friend, tell a stranger at the Wawa, yell it at someone when you're going to the beach this year. At Wawa would be like, hey, asshole, you should listen to the show, and we will appreciate you. And I appreciate you, Blue Meanie, for sticking through with us here on the show. I know we're both under the weather and uh, I'm glad your voice held out well today. And we will see you again next week for a full edition of Mind of the Meaning. For the Blue Meanie, I am Adam Bernard. Join us again each and every week as we take a trip through the mind blue, blue, blue world order. <laughs> of the meaning. Peace. This episode of Mind of the Meanie is hosted and executively produced by the Blue Meanie and Adam Barnard. It was mixed and engineered by Carl Pinnell. Additional narration is provided by the executive voice, Sam Kreps. That's me. Our intro music was performed by the Swamp Candles. Our outro music was performed by Chikara. Additional musical accompaniment is performed by Enrichment. Follow us on Instagram and Twitter, or X or whatever, at Mind of the Meanie, and become part of the Pod Squad by going to patreon.com slash Mind of the Meanie. Find our entire show archive at mindofthemeanie.com. This has been a Butts Carlton Media Production. Butts Carlton Proprietor. That was Blue Minnie's brain out.